Okay, thank you. So my name is Adrian Fluitt from, from Census. You've probably seen from the slide, we're now a Xylem brand. We were acquired by Xylem around six months ago, which has just been so far a really good experience for ourselves. But what we want to talk about today is selecting the right AMI and grid architecture for India. So I've seen a lot of comments uh, about needing multiple comms. I would agree you need some comms, but I think hopefully what we're going to show is that maybe you don't need lots and lots of comms and you certainly don't need that across uh, different areas. Uh, also heard about, it's not just about AMI, it's about the whole end-to-end -end, uh, grid network. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So, so what I'd like to first of all talk about is what we've learned over the last, uh, I would say, sort of five, six, seven years uh, in terms of the requirements which are really needed for a successful uh, smart communication solution for, for uh, AMI and uh, distribution automation. So what we've seen is, where possible, making a dedicated network is really something which gives a huge advantage. It means there's no competing for resources. It may well be, you can basically you can guarantee for the lifetime of the project that the resource that you have today is available for that. So for us, that also means uh, using dedicated radio spectrum, which is purely there for the use of the, the utility. We believe minimal infrastructure is really important. And to achieve that, you need a solution which gives you, you know, ex excellent range and capacity in all environments. So the same solution should be applicable in dense urban areas and the same in sparse rural areas as well. We believe you need to minimize uh, the amount of how long and how complicated it is for you to connect to the network. So we think where possible, direct access uh, to the network uh, is, is a key feature. We've also seen over the last few years how utilities, whilst they have an interest in the technology, they're moving more and more towards defining service level agreements. They can see that there are solutions out there and they're starting to ask their uh, providers to say, provide them guarantees. So they don't need to be involved in the technology decision. They need to be aware of that technology, but being able to commit to very high service level agreements approaching 100% it is really key if you're going to get the most from any smart grid deployment. We also see simplicity of deployment is really important. It should be the same solution for all endpoints. When an installer goes into the field, you don't want them having to open the back of the van and decide which of one of six, or in some solutions we've seen uh, eight meters will be required, depending uh, purely on uh, the communications technology. There should be a minimal number of options to support the communications. And I think we've heard a lot of speakers talk about uh, security as well. So I'll talk, touch a little bit on that. So it's the architecture we propose is a point to multi-point. And you can see from the diagram, so each meter device will connect directly to the comms infrastructure. So there's no relying on other devices. So the minute the uh, infrastructure is installed, the first meter will connect successfully to that network. You don't need to reach a critical mass before meters start connecting. By having sort of low infrastructure as a result of a point to multi-point, it also means you can maximize things like security, the physical security of the installations. Not only is it easier to respond to issues in the comms network, but having low infrastructure, you can invest more in that infrastructure you can put battery backup into that infrastructure. You can put backup lines into that infrastructure. You can physically protect it better as well. I think mo everybody's realized nowadays that two-way multi-application networks are required. The days of uh, one-way connections uh, have disappeared. As part of that, we also need to have superior endpoint outage management. You want to be able to see what's happening to an endpoint, not just at that point in time, but also understand how that endpoint has behaved over the, the years that it's been installed. The one thing which is different between many comms networks and a utility uh, comms network is the endpoints don't move. Once a meter's installed, it stays there. So you, sh you don't need every radio message you get from that meter is important because you can compare that over a period of time. So we believe being able to monitor 
historically look back at endpoints is, is really important. Most networks have built-in redundancy. We would agree with that. Low latency for execution of critical commands, in particular when you're talking about distribution automation. And that can be partly comms, but it's also being able to prioritize traffic and knowing, being able to separate out parts of the network, which can be just for that, that purpose. The use of multicast, being able to reach many meters with a single message, if, when done in the proper way, can really enable that linkage between AMI and uh, load demand. And it also enables rapid updates of uh, new tariffs into meters and firmware. That's all well and good as long as you can connect. We still believe the utility needs to be able to choose which head-end systems they use, which devices, which meters they connect to that. So our approach to that is to provide open interfaces both in the northbound of the system and also down to the endpoints. Range is really important. I won't go through the details on this chart, but you'll see lots of range claimed for different communications technologies. We believe that when you're talking about range, you should be looking at the range which is applicable for your scenario. So if you're looking at uh, a mixture of endpoints which could be indoors, outdoors, in cellars, could be in dense urban, in suburban, in rural areas, there's no point in uh, using existing communications networks which not, have not been built around that. You really need to challenge any communications provider to make sure that they're building the network that is designed to meet the connection to your devices. Meters, unfortunately, can't pick themselves up and move closer to the window. If you can't connect a meter, it's basically a, a lost asset. A, a couple of case studies. Uh, we've deployed or in deploying uh, uh, the solution with a partner, Arkiva, in the United Kingdom, uh, connecting 16 million uh, meters, uh, 10 million electric, 6 million gas. It's a DLMS COSEM implementation, which uh, India is also proposing. But also importantly, the reason the UK project was delayed to start off with was the government realized, and we've heard about cybersecurity, how important it is to make sure that any connection to everybody's home is really done in a secure way. So they had the government, GCHQ, which monitors uh, all of our communications uh, in the UK, they undertook a study to make sure that the right processes were implemented. And that experience can be directly brought over to countries like India. There's no need to go through that learning curve. That experience is now baked into uh, a number of solutions. Locally, we started with uh, one of our uh, potential long-term customers here, BYPL. We're doing a trial in the east side of Delhi. Uh, we've, it was announced just before Christmas we we're going to be doing this, this trial. Uh, that trial, the base stations are now being deployed. Uh, we're starting to do drive testing of those base stations, and over the next uh, few weeks, uh, meters are starting to be installed into that, that area as well. So hopefully we'll be able to see directly uh, that the predictions we've made, the capabilities, can be realized in the India market too. So in conclusion, our belief is a dedicated point-to-multipoint architecture delivers requirements not just for AMI, but also for smart grids in India. We'd acknowledge there's always going to be the need for some other comms, in particular when you're trying to move very high volumes of data. But for the vast majority of DA applications and, of course, AMI, uh, we believe a single communications network is important. We also believe consistent performance and SLAs over time life of the project. So we would say when you're speaking to your communications provider, make sure you're getting SLAs which are committed to not just for the first year or two, but for the, the duration, for the 10, 15, uh, 20 years. Clearly, minimizing the infrastructure has a lot of benefits. And probably the last thing we've learned is trying to keep things uh, simple to deploy while still maintaining security. Thank you.